Um, thanks for coming, folks. I'm the last person between you and the bar, so I'll see you there. Uh, right, I'm Jack. I'm a software engineer from Ovo Energy. We're a renewable energy supplier based in London. And I'm going to talk about Verflow. Yes, that is how you pronounce it which is an operator, a task operator for Airflow that lets you run containers on Google Cloud using greener energy. And you might even save some money along the way too. So some context, last year, carbon emissions from cloud data centers emitted much more carbon than aviation and shipping, uh, and even rice cultivation, which is a food that feeds billions of people a year. And this is only going to grow. So GPT-3, when this was released in 2020, the training of that emitted about 500 tons of CO2. I'm a big fan of ChatGPT. I got it to write most of the um, little marketing hooks to get you to come tonight. Um, but basically, the AI arms race has only just begun. So there's going to be more carbon going around. Uh, so given the sort of conventional wisdom that flying is bad for our planet, we're sort of happy to shame those who travel by plane. And indeed, I hopped on a plane from London all the way here to talk about sustainability, so that's not lost on me either. Um, the Swedish have a word for, for this called fligscam, or flight shame. But we don't think quite in the same way about our use of data center resources. And as DAG authors, collectively in this room, we're custodians of quite a lot of compute power. So there's potential for us to have quite a lot of impact here if we configure things right. And there's a movement underway. So the Green Software Foundation is helping to light the way here with patterns, tools, and best practice to reduce the climate impact of software. So let's see how we can bring this home to Airflow. It all revolves around the concept of a container. So a container, just to, um, just to fill in the blanks, is basically a box that you put your application and its dependencies into. And it's become the de facto standard for deploying applications onto the cloud. And the main reason why is because you build a container once, and then you can run it anywhere. So if you send me the link to a container, I can run it on my laptop, or I can run it on a virtual machine in the cloud somewhere, uh, or perhaps a cluster of machines. Or I can use some sort of auto-scaling mechanism that means that it grows and contracts as, uh, as, uh, as my number of containers needs to. And uh, clusters are great because you get resilience as well in case one of them goes down. Uh, and this is different, right, to sending me a Python file, because if you send me a file, oh, I need to make sure I've got the dependencies loaded, and maybe that conflicts with something else. So containers are great, by the way. So these three sort of compute options on the left are anchored to one region. So I need to spin up a VM or a cluster, and that's going to sit in a, in a permanent place 24 hours a day. There's a new, newish kid on the black block, though, with GCP called Cloud Run. So this is a serverless runtime. And here, it's basically like BYO container. You give it a container address and say, please run it in this region, and it'll do it, and then spin down again. So you use energy, you pay money, and you emit carbon for the minutes or seconds that it's running, rather than all year round. And the great thing here is you can specify the location at runtime. So your DAG potentially has a new destination every time. So containers, great, we like those. Good news, Airflow already plays nicely with containers. So the Kubernetes pod operator, this one on the right here, lets you run any container as a task in a DAG. And this example here, we're running the Debian image, line six, and we're basically just getting it to print out the number 10 to the screen. So it will deploy that container onto a cluster, it'll run. When the container's finished, that task is ticked off, and it'll move on to the next one. The problem here, though, is that this only works with a Kubernetes cluster, one that you've got running all the time. It doesn't work with Cloud Run or serverless in general, so we're anchored to wherever our Airflow cluster is. And this is a problem because the carbon intensity, i.e. how much uh, CO2 we emit for every unit of energy we, we um, produce on the grid, uh, that carbon intensity of the grid that's running your cluster changes all the time. So nowhere is this kind of more um, well illustrated than in California with the infamous duck curve. So this is the duck curve for a couple of years ago now, and it's got three lines on it. So the blue line is load. So this is how much energy is being consumed by consumers on the grid over a 24-hour period, midnight on the left, the next midnight on the right. And you can see there's sort of a peak in the morning, and there's a peak in the evening, when everyone's coming home, they're popping the TV on, they've put the oven on, that's when we're burning most, um, we're consuming most juice from the grid. 
The gray line shows renewable generation, so solar power. And unsurprisingly, it's at its peak just after lunchtime when the sun is highest in the sky. And then the orange line is the delta between the two. So demand net of renewable generation, basically what's left that we have to use dirtier fuels to fill the gap in with. And you can see that orange line really depends on a couple of things, not least the time of day. So the problem is when we need power the most, sun's already gone down. So it might have been nice to run it earlier in the day or potentially overnight when everyone's asleep and we're not burning, we don't need lots of electricity. It can also depend on the weather. So if it's a really sunny, hot day, we're burning a load of air conditioning, but if there's not a lot of wind power to um, counteract that, then we've got a real kind of strain on the grid there as well. Uh, it's seasonal as well, so in the winter we're going to have much less sun, but when it's winter in one part of the world, it's summer in the other. So it might make sense to be able to move our load to where the grid is greenest, where there's that most renewable power. So the long and short of it is, looking at this graph, all those DAGs you're running at 7 a.m. so that everything's ready before you get into the office, and 7 p.m. when you're closing up for the day, they're filthy. So we could just change the time. The problem with that, though, is if your cluster's anything like mine, you've got all of your tasks just lined up perfectly so that, that dashboard is ready for the boss for that sales meeting at 9 a.m. Probably not viable if you've got thousands of tasks. Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. This is going to work. So let's not change the time. Let's change the place. So Verflow is an operator for Airflow that lets you run a container, just like on that Kubernetes, Kubernetes pod operator, but anywhere in the world, and it will run it in the greenest region right now. So it does this courtesy of some data from these folks at Electricity Maps. So these guys provide a real-time API for carbon intensity of different regions across the planet. So we hook into that and say, tell me where the greenest region is, please. And then we deploy the job to that region. So, should we have a demo? Okay. Right, wish me luck. Um, do you want to play a game? Or should we do a hello world? Game? Great. It's not going to work, but let's try it anyway. So, um, who's heard of the birthday paradox? Yes, okay. So the birthday paradox says that if you've got at least 23 people in a room, which unfortunately we don't, then the chance of two people, at least two people in that room sharing a birthday goes above 50%. So it's more likely than not that there's two people in a room with the same birthday, which you wouldn't expect with 23 people, but maths and stuff. So um, should we find out if we've got any matches in this room? Yes. Okay. Audience participation time. Whip your phone out. Scan this barcode. Tell me when your birthday is. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it, just make it up. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll delete all the data at the end. It's a safe space. Don't worry. So you should get a Google form. Okay, promising sign. Uh, music, please. <laughs> Give us a wave if you're done. A couple, okay, a couple more. All right. We'll give it one more minute. Okay, great. Graceful fade out there. Um, right. I'm going to run a DAG. I wrote some very, very, very budget pandas this afternoon to take all this data from Google Forms and hopefully find a match. So if it works, it'll be a miracle. Um, so I've, I've written a DAG. Let's have a look. Uh, birthday paradox. Yeah. OK. It's super simple. It's just got one task. And the code is really, really short. So it just uses that Verflow operator, a bit like the Kubernetes pod operator, and says, please run my image, my container that I prepared earlier on. So let's give it a run and find out where it ends up. OK. Logs. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, fab. Obligatory ASCII art. There. Substance. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, it's finding the greenest region for the job, and it's decided... Can we, should we zoom in? Is that better? Yeah, let's make it really big. It's decided it's going to run it in Montreal, where um, the carbon intensity right now is 29 grams for every um, uh, kilowatt hour of energy uh, produced which is a whole 77 grams less than Toronto right now. So it's only down the road. That's a pretty big difference. So it started that job for me, and hopefully it should be finished shortly. Let's see. Let me zoom out again. It's a bit easier to read. Yep. Track progress, let's do that. Tab. Okay, here's my job, running North America East 1. So it sent it somewhere green. Let's have a look in the logs and see if we've got a winner. It's taking a suspiciously large amount of time. Oh dear. Yep, it didn't work. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Okay, well, um, let's pretend that did work. And great, it ran somewhere green. Fantastic. But I guess we'll never know whose birthdays matched. I still have prizes to give away, so we can make it up. All right, then. Uh, trace back. No, not good. Red. Okay. So, uh, on that bombshell, could Fairflow work for you? So, it suited pretty well to most batch jobs that satisfy these four conditions. So your, tasks need, your task needs to be in a container, or readily containerizable, if that's a word. And putting Python jobs into containers isn't hard work. Um, notwithstanding it didn't work, it only took a few minutes ahead of time. So it's great for jobs where you can't or don't want to change the time, but you do have some flexibility about the location where it runs. So in this case, uh, Verflow just chose any region in the world that was the greenest but you can provide constraints. So if you're regulated such that your data can't leave the US or the EU, you can provide constraints to say, please just stay in that particular region. So you can get a bit of greenness, but stay within the confines of the law. And then the last piece is that it needs to be relatively compute heavy, such that it's worth moving it, but IO light, such that all of the saving you get from doing the compute on the other side of the world isn't weighed off by the fact you had to send the data all that way. Now, if you look at the cloud carbon footprint calculator, which is like the kind of canonical view of carbon emissions based on the cloud, um, carbon from IO is like fractional compared to compute. So it's very unlikely that the last condition won't be satisfied. It's worth giving it a shot. So the best way to find out is, of course, to give it a try. You can pip install Verflow now for, to run on your local machine, which is, um, which is how I ran it just now. Um, or you can load it into a cluster to use at scale. Uh, we're welcoming contributions as well on GitHub. So at the moment, it only works with GCP, but AWS and other clouds have similar serverless runtimes. So there's nothing to stop us from extending it there. And indeed, I thought about this earlier on, there are a number of operators in the Airflow um, ecosystem that take a location as an argument. So if you're, I don't know, using Apache Beam or a bunch of other like cloud-based operators, at runtime, you can normally specify where you'd like it to go. So we could tweak Fairflow actually to just spit out the region, which you could then XCOM through to your other operators. So you could do this with much larger runtimes. Vertex AI is GCP's like um, uh, machine learning model training platform. So that uses a bunch of GPUs, which is even more juice. So there's potential to tweak it here and there. So if you want to give it a try, there's a comprehensive walkthrough on um, my blog post on the Google Cloud blog to walk you through how to get started, set up instructions, and all sorts of stuff there. And if you get stuck, message me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure it'll work for you, though. Did someone put a date of, like, the 30th of February or something? I, I No, okay, right. I wasn't sure. Never mind. Um, so, yeah, drop me a message on LinkedIn, and I'm, and I'm happy to help. So it's worth thinking, then, about what the size of the prize is here. So I ran this demo a um, couple of weeks ago in London. It did work then, and I think we got a match, actually. Uh, and there was a huge, huge difference. So I was running it in London, uh, and the greenest region at the time was in Paris. 234 grams of CO2 for every kilowatt hour difference. Huge. And Paris is only two hours away on the train. 
So um, that's a pretty stark saving sort of per, um, per kilowatt hour. So I thought, well, if I scaled this up to my cluster in general, how much do I save? So I had a little look, and it looks like my, um, my team's cluster sort of hovers around eight cores running on average over the last couple of months, up and down, but broadly around eight. So that's nearly 200 kilowatt hours of electricity used in a year. That's, that's not inconsequential um, amount of juice. So if I multiply the two numbers together, I save about 40, nearly 45 kilos um, by doing a quick find and replace in my repo to change one operator for another. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the journey from London to Paris round trip is 22 kilos. So I've earned a holiday for me and a friend. So in fact, my flig scam, my flig scam is feeling better already. Thank you very much. Any questions? I'm wondering why the kilowatt hours vary so differently between like Toronto and Montreal or Paris and London. Do you have any insight? Yeah, it's based on what we call the fuel mix. So it's the different, um, it's the different uh, sources of uh, like natural resources basically that go into the power station. So um, in Canada, there's a huge amount of hydro power, basically comes from dams that we put over rivers, which means the power is really, really green. Uh, but if you look in places, say in Eastern Europe, for example, there's a huge amount of oil and coal that's burned. So it's much, much dirtier there. So it really depends on um, yeah, the mix of power stations and what they can build. And as I mentioned, the sort of weather on the day and how much renewables there is. So a good example in the UK, we have loads and loads of wind up in Scotland, it's really, really windy, but our data centers are down in London and we don't have um, transmissions li tr transmission lines big enough to bring that renewable power down from Scotland to London. So we have to, we have to literally waste it, it goes in the bin. We tell the, power, the um, wind turbines to stop turning. Um, so it's, it's nuts. So if we, can, if we can move these things around, it, it prevents it going to waste. Check. <laughs>